Good morning, North Rock. How are you doing today? It's so good to see you guys. Thank you for being here. And if it's your first time, we want to say welcome. We hope you guys feel right at home with us. We're going to keep singing here in a minute because we love worshiping Jesus through music. Then Pastor Jonathan is going to come up for the first week of our brand new series, Multiply. All right. Hey, do me a favor. Before we keep singing, give someone next to you a high five and say, I'm so glad you're here.
with Christ, we know we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. Now this is the same Jesus that gave his life upon a cross for you and me. He shed his blood for you and me. And now that blood has power over death. It has power over whatever it is that's going on in your life. So as we sing this next part together, declare this over your life. Declare this to him. The death could not hold you. you in this place today, God. We thank you for this time of worship, and it is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys may have a seat and check out the screen. They're the direction of this church. I think of family. Inspiring. Dedicated. Genuine. Respected. Authentic. Unbelievable. Faithful. Loving. Dynamic. Passionate. I think that it will be excellent. Role models. Visionary leaders. Authentic. They're so inspirational to me and they just fill my heart whenever I see them. Muy cariñoso a mí. Welcoming. Genuine. Cheerful every time I see them. Energetic. Heartwarming. Uh, they are captivating whenever they speak. Um, influential. Genuine love for people. Passionate. Because they are so incredibly passionate about seeing lives redefined by Christ. Faithful. Loving. God's chosen. Loving. I think of an inspirational couple that helps me uh, live my life uh, in a Christ-like way. Dedicated. Unconditional love. Genuine. Genuine. I think I'm dedicated. They're very dedicated to North Rock. Visionaries. Leaders. Confidence. Passionate. Two beautiful people loving Christ. So with October being National Pastor Appreciation Month, we wanted to take a moment today and honor 
our incredible leaders and lead pastors of this church and their family. So Pastor Jonathan, Alicia, Britton, Mason, would y'all step up here for just a moment? That's it. We honor you today. We love you. There you go. You're welcome. Paul writing to the Thessalonian church, he said, Now we ask you to give recognition to those who labor among you and lead you in the Lord. And this family does an incredible job of doing that. And we could have got many of you on video. We only had time for so many, and we could only shoot so many takes of that. But we know so many of you would have such kind words as that to say about this incredible family. I've had the opportunity for the last nine years to, to be a part of this team and to be there before, before there was a North Rock, before there was a website, before there was a building, before there was, before there was a first service. And I want to tell you something about this, this incredible family. They fiercely love this church. And they know that they, they are here on purpose for a purpose. And they, they, they're, they're living their life to answer questions like this. What is best for the people of North Rock Church? What is best for the vision of North Rock Church? What does God want us to do? And how does he want us to lead? And that's how they live their lives. And the passion and the sacrifice that you see publicly, I want you to know it's even that more intent, it's even that intense privately. I, I, I get to hear them and see them when they pray for this church, when they pray for you. I get to see when they, when they work hard to make this the best experience so that people can experience Jesus. And they live their lives for that. All four of them do. Getting them together in one spot on the stage is a little difficult because not only week in and week in and day out, day, day in and day out are they serving, but they're also throughout this building, throughout the weekend, serving, serving all over the place. And they're making a huge difference. Hey, they fear fiercely love you. They fiercely love this church. They love this city. And so we got them some gift cards to some things that they love in this city. Just a small token of our appreciation to say thank you. We love you. We honor you today. Alicia. Uh, Britton. Mason. Oh, you pick yours up. And so that's it. Let's give them a hand right now because we, uh, we love this family. They love this city, they love their spurs, and dear Lord, do they ever love their cowboys. And we, and we love you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. We love y'all. Just want to take a moment and honor them today because we honor them all through the year, but throughout this time, and just say thank you. If you, you get a chance today, high five them, tell them thank you for everything that they do for you and for this church. Take a look at the screen. What's up, everyone, and welcome to North Rock Church. We are so glad that you chose to spend part of your weekend with us. Pastor Jonathan will be up in a moment to start our brand new series, Multiply. But before he comes, here's some things happening around North Rock Church. If today is your first time at North Rock, we want to say thank you for coming. You are a VIP, and all of the North Rock family wants to welcome you. Do us a huge favor and fill out a connection card in the seat in front of you and drop it off at our VIP tent on your way out today. Our team would love to say hello, answer any questions you may have, and give you a gift just to say thank you for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed your time with us and we hope to see you back soon. At North Rock, we believe everyone should be connected to the local church and we would love for North Rock to be that church for you. The way you get connected at North Rock is through Growth Track. Growth Track is happening November 5th, immediately following the second Sunday service at 11.15 a.m. in the office complex next to our building. At Growth Track, we will tell you about North Rock, about membership, and we'll give you the opportunity to join our Rockstar team. Lunch will be on us, and we'll even take care of your kids. We can't wait to see you at Growth Track. If you haven't had a chance to visit our online small group directory, plan to do so today. It's easy to get connected. Simply visit us at northrocksa.com, click on small groups, and scroll through our online directory. If you're not seeing the type of group you're looking for, you can still facilitate a group. 
register it online, and we'll be in touch with the next steps to get your group going. Don't do life alone. Get in a small group today. see you all for week one of Multiply. Did you enjoy the band? We have our in-house uh, version of Seal on the stage today. Better looking version, of course, but uh, 
Yeah, yeah, good times in the house today as we kick off our brand new series. And uh, would y'all do me a favor and make some noise for everybody watching via live stream right now. We're glad to, glad to have you as well. How many of you would say that when you were in school, and for some of you this is like last week, uh, for others this was a long, long time ago, but when you were in school, math, you, you just loved it. You craved math. How many of you loved math? All right, a few of you. Let's say it this way. How many of you was math your favorite subject? So you might have hated all of school, but math was your, your favorite of, of, of the school stuff. Yeah, okay, lots of hands. Mine was too. I, I actually loved math. I, I felt like I understood math. I, I kind of got it. And, and those of us that kind of understand math, we, we, we don't really understand the people who don't understand math. But, but, but I did. I loved math. And I, I have to believe that as we kick off the series called Multiply, that, that God loves math. He does. There's actually a, an entire book in the Bible called Numbers. Numbers. He, God, is, God is into math, but God's math is, is unique. It's a little bit different than our math. It's a little bit crazy. It's, it's miracle math, if, if you will. In fact, let me share a couple of passages with you. The first one out of Old Testament book of Leviticus, and it says, Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. And even if you're not a math whiz, you think about that just for a moment. Five into a hundred is a whole lot different than a hundred into ten thousand. That's just kind of how God's math works. He tends to multiply things. For I will look on you favorably and will make you fruitful. Multiply. Everybody say multiply. Multiply you and confirm my covenant with you. God has this way of multiplying. I think God's favorite math is multiplication because it's all through the Bible. And he doesn't like division. He don't like division. He loves multiplication. With God, one plus one never equals two. He has just a way of when he adds his secret sauce to our efforts, what we have becomes far greater than the sum of our parts. He's just amazing that way. All through the scripture, the word multiply shows up again and again and again. Way back in the, in the Garden of Eden, God speaking to Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 1, 28. And God told them to be fruitful and multiply. God speaking to Noah after the flood. God told Noah, hey, you need to be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. God spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 22, saying, I will certainly bless you. In fact, I'm going to multiply your descendants beyond number. I'm going to take what little you have, and I'm going to multiply it. It's going to be like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Into the New Testament, the Great Commission was all about multiplication. When Jesus came to this earth and gave his life on a cross and was buried and rose from the grave on the third day. Just before he ascended into heaven, he told his followers that they needed to go and, and reach the nation and, and make disciples, the nations. And they went back to Jerusalem. And in Acts chapter 2, uh, the day that the church that we are still a part of began, um, they, they started with 120 that morning, but by the evening of that day, 3,000 had, had been baptized and, and added to God's church. So they went from 120 to 3,120 in one day. God is into multiplying, multiplying. And today, today we're going to, in the first week of this amazing series, we're going to talk to you about the multiplication blessings that come along with generosity. With generosity. Doesn't that fire you up? You know that? Doesn't that fire you up? Whatever. Like I'm going to talk about giving and how giving brings blessings into our life. Doesn't that excite you? Yeah, yeah. I know you want to clap, so just go ahead. Go ahead and do it. Yeah, we're talking about generosity today. Hey, do me a favor, because as soon as you hear, I mean, like, oh, you can talk about addiction, I can talk about sin, I can talk about pornography, I can talk about all sorts of things, and, and y'all cool, but as soon as we start talking about giving, everybody just gets real tight, so let's, let's, let's do this, let's just kind of hold your hands in the air like you just don't care, wave them around a little bit, let's lean way over this way, we're just going to stretch it out a little bit, just stretch it out, 
Stretch it out back this way. Stretch it out, yeah. Okay, okay. Everybody take a deep breath. Blessings that come along with generosity. Multiplication blessings. Because at North Rock, we have discovered the blessings that come along with irrational generosity. I've discovered this in my own life. And, and I know that many people in the room, you probably feel like you're pretty generous. So I want you to just kind of think to yourself right now. And I don't want you to raise your hand, but just think to yourself and, and, and ask yourself, am I a generous person? Am I a generous person? I'm not going to have you raise your hand because most of you probably feel like you are generous. Tragically, in the United States... Generally, we are not nearly as generous as we think we are. A couple of quick thoughts here. First of all, when it comes to Americans, we don't feel rich, but we really are. Most Americans don't feel rich, but we are. We don't feel rich because we compare ourselves with people who have more. There's always somebody that has more, right? Well, you live in a, in a, in a community that has a gate, well, but, but they live in a community that has a gate and a guard shack. There's always somebody that has, you know, more than you have. And, and, and so we always feel like we don't have much. But depending on what research you read, if you have an automobile, you are in the top 3 to 6% of, of people in the world just because you have a car. Just because you have a car. And most of us have more than one. And we have those little houses that we pull our cars into so that we don't have to speak to our neighbors if they're out in the yard when we get, when we get home. We can pull in, close the door, and we don't even have to look at their face. Um, and that's just how we roll. We are so rich that today after church, you're going to go to a, you're going to pull your automobile up into a building or up to a building, and you're going to walk in and sit down at a table. It's going to be a comfortable environment, air-conditioned environment. They're going to bring you a piece of paper, and you're going to get to choose something off of that piece of paper out of tons of options that you want to eat. Like, and everybody can eat different things. Everybody don't have to eat the same things. Everybody at the table can get something different if you want to. And, and the person who comes and, and you tell them what you want to eat off of this piece of paper, they're actually going to go in the back. They're going to cook that food for you and bring it back out to you nice and warm just like you ordered it. And you're going to be able to consume it. And after you get through eating it, then they're going to clean up after you. You don't have to, you don't have to clean up. That's how, that's how rich we are. We have so much. We are so rich that even when we go to the potty, we can push a button and all the bad stuff goes away. Everybody does not have that luxury in other parts of the world. We are rich. We don't feel like we are. And I could give you many, many more statistics to prove that we are rich, but, but, but we are. But the truth is, most Americans also think that we are generous, and we really aren't. Most of us think we're pretty generous, but we're really not so generous. Did you know that the average American gives away 2.8% of their income? 2.8%. And the really, really rich Americans, you know, those who make over $100,000 a year and, and up, the actual, the percentage goes down. They actually only give away, the, the richer Americans only give away 2.6% of their income. Not, not nearly as God-honoring and generous as we, we tend to think we are. But in most cases, I want you to hear me, in most cases, it's not because we don't want to give. It's not because we wouldn't like to give more, but it's because we don't feel like we can because so many of us live with a scarcity mindset. A mindset that says, I, I don't know if I should give because I'm afraid I won't have enough. A scarcity mindset. I want to show you on the big screen kind of how the scarcity mindset works. First of all, at the very top we have the fact that God supplies and God does supply. Everything that we have comes from God. Everything that I have comes from God. And you might say, but I've worked really, really hard for what I have. Yeah, and that's a great, that, that's a great thing to do. It's a scriptural principle for you to work. The scripture says, if a man doesn't work, then he ne shouldn't necessarily be eating. And we have to work if we want to eat. Working is, is biblical. 
But the truth is, God is the one who gave you the strength to work. God is the one who's given you the breath in your lungs to, to work. God is the one who's given you the talents and the abilities to work. God has blessed you. You might say, well, I don't even work, but I've inherited all my money. Well, God gave, God gave your mama and daddy the ability and the strength to work. Whatever you have, whatever you have, God has supplied it. But here's how the scarcity mentality works. We consume. We consume. And we are really, really good at consuming, aren't we? I mean, we are like pros in the United States at consuming. We, we scheme to buy things, don't we? The new phone, the new TV, the new car. We scheme, we plan, we work for days and weeks to try to figure out how we can afford this. And in America, we're so good at consuming that we even, we even spend more than we make. <laughs> we're that good at it. Like, we make this much and somehow we spend this much. It's amazing how good we are at consuming in the United States of America. So what happens is when, when we consume God's supply, when we consume it, the next thing that happens is we start to lack. We lack. And suddenly, wait a minute, I don't have the money to do what I need to do. I'm not sure the money's going to make it to the end of the month. And, and we lack. And the next thing that happens is kind of obvious is we get afraid. Fear sets in. We, we fear. We fear. I've consumed it all, now I don't have enough, and now I'm afraid. And then the process continues. The very next month, we consume some more. We consume because we're behind already, so we need to consume it. We're behind on bills, we're behind on this, we're behind on groceries. So we consume when God supplies, we consume that. And this vicious cycle continues. We're living paycheck to paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. And you can hear it in language when people say things like, I just can't seem to get ahead. I just can't seem to get ahead. I'm in this, I'm in this cycle of, of scarcity. I always feel like I'm struggling. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm surviving. I'm just trying to keep my head above water. I wish I could give more. Oh, I really wish I could tithe. I wish I had what it took to be able to tithe, but, but, but the money's just not there. It's a cycle of scarcity because we, we consumed God's supply. We took it all for ourselves, and, and now we're lacking and there's fear constantly, constantly bombarded with fear in our life. So many people live with anxiety and fear day after day after day after day as it relates to their financial condition. And this is not God's plan because God has called us to a different way of living. He has this amazing plan of abundance for our life. So this is what we do. As followers of Christ, let me show you what we do. We give generously. As followers of Christ, we know that we're going to give generously. We, we, we give. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. And I love this passage. In, in verse number 7, he says, You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Now, hang right here for just a moment because I think this is very significant. This is the reason that we don't ever try to manipulate. We never have and we never will manipulate people into giving, show you scary or really sad pictures, to get kind of arm behind your back and get you to actually, I, I should probably give, you know, uh, you know, the, the puppies where you can't see anything but the ribs or whatever. And, and we're just trying to, and, and it's fine for you to give to that kind of stuff, but, but we, we we choose not to do this at, at North Rock because we know the scriptural principle of deciding in your heart how to give so that you can give cheerfully, not, not reluctantly or in response to pressure, but so that you can give cheerfully. And when you decide, when you make it a priority, like you've, you've made it a decision, it's, in, it's part of your budget, like you know this is what we're going to do, it's amazing how much, cheerful, how much more cheerfully you can give. But watch what happens next in verse number 8. And God will generously provide you all you need. When you give, when you make the decision and you give, it's amazing how it happens. This is how God's math works. He generously provides you with everything you need, all that you need. Not some of what you need, but all of what you need. Then you will always, it's like every now and then Paul would do this. I said it, but I need to say it again just to make sure you're getting it. Then you will always have everything you need. But not just that. You'll also have plenty left over to share with others. 
But this happens after I make the decision I'm going to give. And whenever I make that decision and I choose to give, then God comes behind and provides everything I need and there's more left over for me to continue to give and I can give even more away. I want to share with you as a side note here today because, again, we don't do the manipulation thing when it comes to giving. I would have been a terrible salesman, y'all, anyway, to try to try to get people to buy things that they really don't need. Uh, I would have been a terrible salesman. I mean, I, 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 people would drive up if I were selling cars, and I'd be like, why are you buying this car? Your car that you're in is better than this car. I don't know why you would do that. I would have been a terrible salesman. Uh, so we just don't, we don't do that at North Rock. But I do want to tell you about... Uh, an event, an opportunity for you to give seven weeks from today. I'm telling you about it in advance so that you can live out this scripture and decide in advance, in advance, what God wants you to give. Our legacy weekend is December the 9th and the 10th. December the 9th and the 10th. And this is our once a year above and beyond your tithing, above and beyond your tithing, this is our once a year gift opportunity. And I want you to pray about it. I want you to plan this. And, and whatever, God, whatever God encourages or lays on your heart for you to give, um, you, you, can, you, you, can, you can respond in obedience. And this is your opportunity to make a difference. Th this particular offering helps us, helps accelerate the vision that God has given us for North Rock Church. Every year as we enter in a new year, and I know it's hard to be thinking about New Year right now, but in December we will be thinking about it more. But every year as we enter into a new year, I feel like we're at a crossroads as a church. Do we, do we, do we maintain or do we multiply? Do we hold the ground that we have or do we take more ground? And God has given us a dream and a vision to reach our city, to not stop until Jesus runs this town. And, 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 and this legacy offering helps set us up for the new year to move and advance and take more ground for His kingdom. So legacy is not about a long-term commitment. Legacy is not about, it's not a campaign. It is a one-day, one-time opportunity for you to bring your best Christmas gift to the kingdom of God. So I want you to talk to God and talk to your family about it and be thinking about that over the next seven weeks. That's just one opportunity that you're going to have to be generous. And as followers of Christ, what we do is we give generously. We give generously. Paul continued this passage in verse number 10. Same passage, Paul continues. He's already been talking about how you decide in your heart what to do. You give, and then God, God gives back to you generously and provides everything that you need. He continues this thought in verse number 10. For God is the one who provides seed to the farmer. Everything we have comes from God. And then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources. He will provide and increase your resources, and then He will produce a great harvest of generosity in you. God will increase your resources. When we choose to give, He increases our resources. And, and I, I love this passage because the whole thing is kind of diametrically opposed to our common ideology as it relates to giving, which is, for most of us, the scarcity mentality. I consume, and so I don't have enough, so now I'm afraid, and I just wind up consuming more. Not having enough, I'm afraid consuming more. This passage is completely the opposite of that. Because it says if we give, God will multiply. So here's what, what we do is we give generously, and watch what God does. If you're taking notes, God multiplies abundantly. God multiplies abundantly. I know that I have that slide for the screen. When we give, there it is. That's not it. That's not it. God multiplies. There it is. This is what God does. We give generously, and God multiplies abundantly. God multiplies abundantly. And here's how the, the new cycle works. Here's how, here's how it should look. God supplies and we give. We don't consume first, we give first. I'll talk more about that in just a moment. We give 
first. And when we give first, here's what God does. According to the scripture we just read, God multiplies. God gives us an increasing, an increased amount of resources. He multiplies what we have. And suddenly there's a great harvest of generosity. Now we have more stuff, but we don't have it just for us. We don't have increased resources just for us. It's, it's fine for you to enjoy the fruit of your labor. As a matter of fact, that's scriptural. Did you know that God wants you to enjoy your stuff? He does. Some people, that takes the pressure off of this whole talk today. God wants you to enjoy your stuff. It's okay for you to have fun things. It's okay for you to have the motorcycle, the sea dew, the boat, whatever it is that you, the vacation house. It's okay. God wants you to enjoy that. When, when he increases your resources, he wants you to enjoy that stuff. But he also wants there to be a great harvest of generosity. He's blessing you so that you can be even more of a blessing. So when God supplies, we give. And then God multiplies. And when God multiplies, it's amazing how it works. Our faith grows. When you experience God multiplying what you have, you're, you're, you're amazed and your faith grows. Like the first time you experience that, it kind of blows your mind. You're like, whoa, I know that the scripture said it and I guess I should believe what the Bible says, but it's amazing how when I actually put it into action, how it works. We give, God multiplies, faith grows and you know what we do? We give again. We give more. We continue to give. So the, here you have the, the cycle of scarcity that way too many people are living in. And you have the cycle of abundance that God wants us all to be living in. If we would just obey and believe His Word. His Word. Creating this abundant mindset of giving as God supplies. And, and, and let me share with you Quickly, scripturally, where giving begins. Like the baseline of giving. The baseline of giving in the scripture is something called the tithe. The tithe, T-I-T-H-E. And here's what tithing does. Tithing breaks the cycle of scarcity. And it creates a new cycle of supply. Tithing. Hear this. If you're taking notes, and even if you're not, you should write this down. Tithing breaks the cycle of scarcity. I'm afraid I'm not going to have enough. Oh, no. What if I run out of money? And it creates a new cycle of supply where God is able to kind of put his math to work in our world. And suddenly we have more than we even thought we could ever have. The word tithe is a Hebrew word that literally means one-tenth. One-tenth. The first 10% of everything that we receive according to Scripture, belongs to God. God reserved it. He set it aside for himself a long, long time ago. And the cool thing about the tithe is it, it's a percentage. That means it levels the playing field. That means that everybody can play along. It doesn't matter if you're making, if your check says 50 on it or if your check says 5,000 on it or 50,000 on it. Uh, everybody can be involved because it's a percentage. It levels the playing field. I, I, I've been following this principle my entire life. From back in the early days, whenever I was just a kid, cutting my neighbor's yard and they'd give me a $10 bill, I would bring 10% of that. $1 for you non-math wizards. I would bring that $1... To, to God's house, back to the church, because it, I knew it belonged to God. And what's so amazing is as my income increased over, over the years, and I got married, and now there's two incomes, and then you know as we've gotten older, I've never ceased to give God that 10%. The numbers have changed, but the percentage n n never has. And the principle of the tithe has been in place since the beginning of time. Way, way before Old Testament law came into place, Abraham was bringing the tithe to God. And then, of course, it's in the law and in the Old Testament, but fast forward all the way into the New Testament where, where Jesus mentioned the tithe on, on a couple of different occasions. The tithe was just assumed by Jesus. And let me tell you something. The tithe breaks the cycle of scarcity in our life, and it creates a new cycle of supply. It breaks the cycle of 
scarcity. So let me, let me unpack the tithe and kind of help you understand the blessing of the tithe in, in your life as well as the lives that you'll be impacting. The, the first thing that the tithe does is it teaches us to put God first. If you're taking notes, the tithe teaches us to put God first. First, He's not last. He's not third. He's not seventh. But that's God's perfect number. Yes, it is. That's the number of completion. That's not where He fits in your life. God should be first in your life. And the tithe teaches us to put God first. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23. I love the way the Living Bible uh, shares this passage. It says, the purpose of the tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your lives. Always put God first in your life. And I know it freaks some people out when you think about 10% 10% do what now? That kind of freaks me out a little bit just to even think about it. I'd probably have to rearrange some things in my life. Yeah, you probably will. I might have to give up a few things, perhaps. Yes. It's going to really stretch my faith, man, if I start tithing. Yes, yes. It's going to stretch your faith because it takes faith to give first. It doesn't take faith to give last. It takes faith to give first. It doesn't take faith to give last. I think of it kind of like a pie analogy. If I, someone were to place a, a, a nice hot apple pie on a table, and I'm thinking, yummy, that's really good. I mean, it's filled with goodness, and uh, can't wait to dive off into that. It's, it's, still, it's still warm, and you can feel it. And, but, but, but as I start to cut into my pie, I, I start to have to give it to various people and various things. And as I go down the table, I give the first piece to the mortgage company because that's pretty important. I need somewhere to live. I, I give my next piece to, well, I give it to AT&T because even if I don't have a car, I have have to have a phone. I mean, I, I can't survive without this, y'all. And then, then uh, you know, Time Warner's in there because, I, I mean, I got to watch my Cowboys and, and, um, and I'm going to need my internet. You know, it's like, you, you know, you've seen those commercials about uh, 20 minutes without internet, one hour without internet, and we're, we curl up into, we, we can't survive, you know, without, without the World Wide Web, just access to it. And then, and then there's, and, and then, of course, I've got to make those car payments. And because I've I just had seen another truck that I really wanted, you know, two months ago, and I had to go get it. I didn't need it. I already had one, but now I've got two car payments, so I'm, I'm, I'm spreading my pieces of pie out, and I'm going down the table, and, and I'm giving another piece to, you know, whatever it might be for you, credit card debt, and another piece to, to insurance, and by the time I get to God at the other end of the table, the pie is, the pie plan is, is empty. It's empty, so I said, well, look. I mean, I know I can scrape a few things out here, so I scrape some crumbs out of the edge. There's a little piece of crust right there. Let me get a little piece of crust for you. Right here. It's, it, I mean, it still tastes decent. I mean, it's just a few crumbs, but, but it's pretty good. That's how so many of us live our life as it relates to giving because we're living this cycle right here. We consume it all. We lack, we fear. We want to give. It's not that we don't want to. We just don't have it in the right place. We don't have it prioritized right. So what God is calling us to is to give first. Because it takes faith to give first. It doesn't take faith to give last. But it takes faith to give to God first. And allow His blessing to be on what I am doing. When I give my tithes, when I bring my tithes to God... Every single time my faith grows, I am telling God, you are first. And it's, it's such a practical and tangible thing to do. And yet at the same time, it is so very, very spiritual. Because I'm telling God, I have arranged my life. I've prioritized everything around you. And tithing number two, tithing number two, it builds my faith. It builds, absolutely builds my faith. Every time I give and God blesses and multiplies, my faith grows. Watch what the scripture says in Malachi 3 and 10. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. In our context, the storehouse is the local church. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And God says, watch this, test me in this. 
I dare you to try it and see if I won't throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room for you to store it. I'm talking about multiplied blessings in your life so much that you don't even know where to put it. I don't even know what to do with it. But he can't do that unless we pass the test and we bring the whole tithe to the storehouse. Bring it to the storehouse. Let me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Would you rather have 100% of your income without God's blessing on it or 90% of your income with God's blessing and anointing all over it? And I want to promise you, I'll guarantee you because God's word does not lie. He is, he is bound to his word. If we will obey his word and we will give first instead of consuming first, we will bring that tenth to God's house, he will bless, he will multiply, and that 90% will go exponentially further than the 100% without his blessing. And the truth is, either your finances are blessed or they are not. And it's up to you. It's up to you. This is what the Bible says. I've experienced it my entire life, and I wouldn't be doing my job. If I didn't share this opportunity with you for God to multiply your, your, your finances, but not just your finances, blessings in general on your life, so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. Every time someone comes to me and tells me a story about financial problems and financial woes and how they just can't seem to get out of, get out of the cycle, I, I, I always bring up the tithe and ask that question, are you tithing? Because if, if you're not tithing, you literally take away God's ability to bless you. Because he's bound to his word. He wants to bless you. But you've got to pass the test. You've got to show him, I can handle it, God. I'm willing to give first and let you multiply. And my faith grows and I'm going to give even more. I'm going to give even more as you bless and multiply. I've experienced this my entire life. So many times where one and one didn't quite add up. But because I was tithing, God was able to make the money last the month. I want to share with you a video of a couple of amazing North Rockers that we, a story we just recently heard. We had, we had about a decade that was really hard. Um, when we were first married and I, and I grew up in a situation and, and for all my life was one of those people that was uh, kind of fell in the category of 20 bucks in the basket uh, when you go to church on Sundays and um, I, feel like, I feel like the rewards that were coming back to me were kind of consistent with 20 bucks in the basket um, and it wasn't until I met Rob and, and we started actually talking about tithing and, and the whole spirit behind tithing and I was still so fearful. I was so afraid to uh, to just let go and, and, and trust God. <clears throat> and for me, there was a time where Jonathan on the stage, um, and, and we hear him say it uh, lately, particularly very often, he says that uh, you know prayer should not be a, a, a last resort. It should be a first response. Trusting God, surrender, should be a first response, not a last resort. And it really requires change in mindset, at least particularly for me, to go from uh, $20 in the basket. That's a lot of money, and, and it is a lot of money, but when you shift your perspective to moving on 90% and giving God the first 10%, I think that's when things started to change in our life. So we attended Growth Track, and Pastor Jonathan was talking about um, tithing. And we both looked at each other afterwards and said, Ryan, that's what's missing. That is what's missing in our lives. And so as terrifying as that was, because when we would look at the bank account, and we'd be like, ooh, ooh. we knew that that was the thing, what we were going to do. So we pinky swore, and we said, we're going to do this. <laughs> and so we sat down, and our first check, we held that with shaky hands. We said, please God, we, we, we submit, we, we surrender, you're the one in control. So we actually
actually took uh, took our paycheck and we held it in our hands and prayed over it and we and we said God we're the first and we're going to trust that you are multiply it and uh, over the course of time over the last couple of years that's just continued to happen and uh, I don't have an explanation for it but I know in my heart that if I trust God and if I freely give that those those blessings come in return. So you tied joy with get joy back. So incredible. It was intentional that we were coming from a place of joy because God blessed us so so much through our life that even though we thought it was hard and the struggles were looking the amazing gifts he brought us through some really dark times. Just, just taking my personal income, my role has doubled it in one year's time he has doubled it not once not twice but three specific times and has brought us to an amazing place of abundance and and joy and that's just one story don't make some noise for ryan and rob <clears throat> word works god's way works it works y'all God issues a test, a challenge. You got to, you, you have to believe that the God who created this world and everything in it, who flung the stars into space, who breathed in a handful of dirt and became man, you have to believe that if God says, I challenge you, I, t I dare you to test me, that He's got what it takes to back it up, to back that challenge up. The third thing that tithing does, the final thing is that it provides for the work of God's church. It provides for the work of God's church. Malachi 3 and 10, again, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Food in my house. And week after week after week, we provide food in this house for those who have hungry hearts, thirsty spirits. I'm not talking about Krispy Kremes or crackers or little cookies out front or coffee out front or for those who come on Saturday night and get all this cool stuff, uh, uh, the popcorn, the uh, 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 Coke floats and whatnot. I'm not talking about that kind of food. And every week it happens. How many people in this room right now, you know, you know that your spirit has received nourishment and strength from the food in this house. Your marriage has been you took a step and, and surrendered your life to Jesus. You were baptized. Your child surrendered their life to Jesus. Every week, the children up in Kids Rock, not only are they hearing about Jesus, we're giving them an opportunity to step forward and say, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. And it happens week after week after week. Students are student night. Teenagers surrendering their life to Jesus and, and stepping into God's purpose for their life. Folks, we're not praying for a revival here at North Rock. We are in the middle of a revival. In the month of September, we, we averaged more people than we have ever had on any normal month in the history of North Rock Church. People are coming. Lives are being changed. People are being healed. Their hearts being saved. Purpose being renewed. Smiles put back on faces. People who thought they may never smile again. It's happening. And the reason it's happening is because of food in the house. Amazing people who have discovered, discovered the power of God's multiplication and who've decided, I'm going to do what it takes. I'm going to do what it takes to give and let God bless and multiply. And not only are you receiving the benefits, but the effects are far-reaching, rippling to other parts of the country, church plants popping up all over the country that North Rock is investing in, people being saved in, in Kansas City, people being saved in New York, and in, in Mississippi, in Arkansas, and all over the places because you chose to give and trust that when I give, God's going to multiply, my faith is going to grow, I'm going to be able then to give even more. So let me ask you a question before we go today. What cycle are you in? What cycle are you in of scarcity? Or are you living a cycle of abundance? Where are you living? I want to invite you. I want to invite you into a cycle of abundance. This is where God wants you to live. This is His purpose and plan for your life. 
giving, supplied money, faith going through. Close your eyes if you don't mind. I want to say a word of prayer for you. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word today. It challenges us. It encourages us. Give us the courage and the faith to live our lives your way. Give us the courage and the faith to live our lives your way. I pray that people all over this world would have the audacity and the faith to trust you to give first, to bring the tithe first, 10%, Lord, and then even above and beyond that. But Lord, give us the faith to trust what your word says is right, to live it out in our lives, Lord Jesus. You want to bless us. You want to bless us. We just got to show you the way it takes to be blessed. Thank you for this truth. Thank you, God, that your math is not like our math. Thank you, Lord, that some things don't add up, and yet somehow you have a way of making them work miraculously. You are blessing us, Lord Jesus. We are so grateful. I continue to pray here this morning. If you're in the room today and, and you know that God is not first in your life, in fact, you may feel far from Him today. You may feel a million miles away from God. You know that you're not in a relationship with Jesus. I want you to know that no matter what in your life feels, all the best stuff you feel, He loves you just like you are. And He wants to save you. He wants to bring healing and hope to you. I need you to leave the way that you are, but He accepts you just like you are. Talk about giving. Jesus gave. All have simple word I always use called surrender. We just surrender our life to Him. If you our will to Him. And if you're in the room, you know that that just for faith. I'm going to give I'm going to pray a simple prayer in just a moment. Allow you the opportunity to start that incredible. I'm looking around but myself pastoral team. I'm going to leave you right there seated. But if you would say, John, I want to surrender. I need to surrender my life to Jesus today. Maybe you have never taken that step. Or maybe at some point you are in a committed relationship with Jesus, but you know you're not anymore. Either way, if you want to be included in this prayer, if you throw your hand in the air right now, hold it up high and see it. Hold it high and let me see it. Leave it there. Beautiful. I need to surrender to Jesus. Beautiful. Hold it high. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I see it. Beautiful. You can put your hands down now. I'm going to pray a simple prayer of surrender, and I invite you to this along with your own word. Lord Jesus, I need you to save me. I invite you into my life to be the Lord and the Savior of my life. I surrender to everything to you. I want to start over, Lord Jesus. I want to start over on this October Sunday morning. And I should start following you. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you gave your life for me so that I could get freedom from my sin. You rose from the grave. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for my sins and save me. Lord and Savior of my life. And from this day forward, Lord, everything changes. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Let's give a hand to that step of faith. Can you do that? That's awesome, guys. Yeah. It's a celebration we celebrate with heaven today. And hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, Pastor Jonathan, or the first time in a long time, there's a connection. Seat back in front of you. Worship God in your hand. If you would fill that out, your information on the front and on the back or top box, my life to Christ. If you'll check that box and get the information filled and put it in the offering bucket when it comes by in just a moment, and it's going to give us an opportunity to come alongside you in this next step that you have in the decision that you made today. And as we continue.
to in our worship as we say every week as we prepare for our giving and our tithing, our Sunday giving and tithing and generosity. And as you do that, and our usher is preparing right now, and whether you give in the bucket that'll pass in just a moment, or you give on the website, or you give through one of the ways that I give is through text giving. You just text the number, put your information in, text in it to do. Or for those of you that have heard that of giving has been the giving count. Uh, we we we've up the equipment. Uh, we we've got some of the newest, latest, greatest upgrade that's secure. Within the lot, they want to stop and give there on your way out. But I want you to know something as you're preparing today. What Pastor Jonathan was talking about with tithing, being intentional about it. North Rock is intentional about tithing. Every dollar that comes to you every month, we give away 10% of it. And every month, that is set aside and taken care of immediately. As soon as, as soon as the reports come in, we're immediately giving it away following this tithing principle is in scripture and God is blessing because of that and because of your generosity and, and the intentionality of 10% giving away as a church you're making a difference in this city around this nation and around the world so thank you for doing what you do our ushers are going to come at this time give you an opportunity to be intentional in your in the bucket today and doing that I want you to know that next weekend um, in this as he said, as Pastor Jonathan said earlier, because of generosity, we're able to see incredible things happen. But say next Sunday night. All right, all right. Four of y'all did, did, did good. You're busy. You got buckets flying around you. You're good. Um, it's our once a month student event. And Pastor Caleb and his team have put together another event for our students. If you have a student from sixth grade through college, I just want to make sure that they're here next Sunday night, October 20th. Go ahead and plan your week. Uh, if, you know, some parents, you work, it, work this out right, it's a night. So get, get your kids here. Get your kids, more importantly, get them an opportunity to hear about Jesus and what he can do in their world, and it's going to change their world. So get them here next weekend, October 29th on Sunday night. Get your sixth grade and students here for that. Next weekend, you don't want to miss it. We're going to be continuing, and I have no idea what this means, the creative said when you end just tell them hey we're gonna have some extra for you next week oh no a little riddle for you to think about throughout the day would you stand with me today we're there our prayer teams in the back of the room stopping if you need prayer for anything have a great sunday the rain has dropped and i believe the sun's out enjoy your day